from anonymous threats of physical violence against the students of a high school to a revolting and unprovoked murder. These are three real disturbing 4chan posts. Due to the dark subject matter, I am advising viewer discretion. I am Fearcrawler. Welcome to the video. Founded in October of 2003 by 15-year-old Christopher Poole, 4chan was originally intended to be an anime-related message board, where users could post messages, photos, and start discussion threads, all while remaining anonymous. Despite its seemingly innocent beginnings, it wouldn't be long before the website expanded into topics unrelated to anime, and found itself at the center of multiple controversies, as well as criminal activities from its vast community of online users. On the morning of September 20th, 2012, the Skyline High School located in Washington released a statement to the parents of the students that all classes and after-school activities would be canceled for the day. The statement, released at 7.40 a.m. that morning, read as follows. As you may or may not have heard, Last night we learned of an online threat to Skyline students set to happen this morning. Working with police who are investigating the credibility of the threat, we decided to act out of an abundance of caution and close the school today. While the threat is Skyline specific, we have no reason to believe any other schools are in danger. However, this is definitely an unnerving reminder for everyone about potential dangers in this day and age. It is always up to families to make individual decisions about the safety of their students, and all schools have flexibility around absences during extraordinary circumstances. We will continue to keep you updated with more information as it is available. Please take this opportunity to give your child an extra hug this morning. The threat this statement references was an online post to 4chan, in which someone claiming to be a Skyline student wrote that he was going to bring his father's gun in and, in the poster's own words, open fire on the people in the commons in the morning until I am either taken down by our school's police officer or until I run out of mags. Fortunately for the students and staff at Skyline, the shooting never took place. On October 2nd of the same year, the 16-year-old student who made the threats was arrested at his home. The teenager, who was a former student of the high school, was also suspected of making similar threats to another school in April of the same year. The event was later dismissed as an online prank by a teenager who made some poor choices. But when you consider the former student used a proxy server in Sweden to hide his location, the level of planning he took makes this all the more unnerving. In December of 2013, 21-year-old criminal justice student Dakota Moore logged into the 4chan chat room and began a live stream that soon reached the maximum 200 viewer limit. During the 40-minute live stream, the student, in the privacy of his dorm room, began swallowing large amounts of pills and vodka, all while being encouraged by numerous members in the chat. It was then that Dakota took a toaster from beneath his bed and used it to set the room on fire. Fortunately, police and firefighters were able to get to Dakota in time and save his life. According to friends and fellow students, Dakota's attempted suicide was in stark contrast to the persona he presented at the school. The suicide attempt was a complete shock to those that knew him, but perhaps even more shocking is how anyone could encourage him to go through with it. At 3 p.m. on November 4th, 2014, the following message was posted to a 4chan forum. Turns out, it's way harder to strangle someone to death than it looks on the movies. The chilling message was accompanied by a single photo of a nude female posed in an unnatural position with a visible ligature mark around her neck. The body was that of 30-year-old Amber Coplin, a resident of Portland, Oregon. A second post followed, stating, She fought so damn hard. A third post followed with another photo of Amber's body. 
This one read, Check the news for Port Orchard, Washington in a few hours. Her son will be home from school soon. He'll call her. Then call the cops. I just wanted to share the pics before they find me. I bought a BB gun that looks realistic enough. When they come, I'll pull it out, and it will be suicide by a cop. I understand the doubts. Just check the news. I have to lose my phone now. The public interest in the post was extremely high, with thousands of online users trying to identify both the victim in the photos, as well as the poster that was responsible for the murder. Amber's car, which was missing after the murder, was spotted by police driving on a state highway. Even though police were able to pull the vehicle over, the driver sped away before an apprehension could take place, driving into oncoming traffic before losing police. The following day, a passing police car in Wilsonville, Oregon, was approached by a man who said he wanted to turn himself in. The man was 31-year-old David Kallick, Amber Copland's boyfriend. He confessed to police that on the day that Amber was murdered, they had been drinking when an argument arose between the two. David responded by strangling her with his hands. When this proved ineffective, he tried to use a shoelace before finally striking her in the head and ending her life by way of blunt force trauma. It was then that he performed depraved sexual acts with her body, including biting it and posing with it in photos. In May 2017, David Kallick was sentenced to 82 years in prison, far too lenient of a sentence for such a revolting individual. That's all for today's video. I do hope you enjoyed. Until next time, everyone take care, be safe, and above all, stay scared.